all you need is some pantry items and some frozen items. Those are really good because they last a long time. Not every day is good, but there's something good in every day. If you're not there today, it is okay. It is so okay. This is my second cup of coffee today. My hair is still a little bit wet because I took a shower. I uh, actually took a shower in the morning today, so that was good. I feel like this has been such a strange time to film videos to say the least. I don't want to start this video on a negative foot, but I do think it's important to talk about what you're feeling and to feel what you're feeling and not to glorify only the positive and like social media trendy type of emotions. So you can be positive and scared. You can be positive and optimistic and hopeful about the future and overwhelmed by uncertainty and and of how weird it feels to not be in your normal routine or to be worried for your health and still try to make the most of every day and i think that sometimes social media including youtube sometimes it feels like you can't it can't be yes and it has to be either or and i'm here to show you hopefully in this video that while we are feeling overwhelmed and scared and uncertain and maybe just straight up sad or even angry we can also try to make the most of every day one of my favorite quotes is one that i've heard ingrid nelson say a lot and it's that not every day is good but there's something good in every day and i really try to live my life in a way where I am trying to pay attention to the good that exists in every day. And some days that's a lot easier than others. And in some days, it's very small little moments. Actually, it's often very small little moments, but they can be really soul affirming and sustaining and comforting. And I've really been seeking comfort and ease and um, just like a slower pace right now. A lot of you guys can probably relate. I think that there has been a lot of feeling like we have to be positive and we have to stick to our routines and we have to get up and like do everything perfectly even though everything is different and like a lot of us are in circumstances that we never really imagined we would be in and like not being able to do normal things like going to the grocery store all of that is unprecedented and it's global and we're all experiencing it together so it's very normal to feel overwhelmed and like you're not doing it perfectly and that's okay i think the only way to really get through this is to be gentle with yourself and to take care of yourself in the way that you would take care of a small child i keep reminding myself of that so like i wouldn't get frustrated with a kid who was scared and i also wouldn't get frustrated with a kid because they wanted a piece of chocolate or something comforting you know like i i would be a lot more compassionate towards a child in this situation than i have been with myself so throughout this video you're gonna see me do things that make me feel good and make me feel cared for and is like my way of nurturing myself the way that I would nurture that child with compassion and love. So I hope that this video gives you guys some inspiration to do the same. Even if it doesn't, I hope that it helps to kind of entertain you for a little while and take your mind off things. I hope it is a bright spot in your day. Um, I recommend maybe pausing this video right here and going to get yourself something warm to drink like a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or a hot chocolate or something grab a snack come back get cozy and then we'll get into it i just toasted up some ezekiel bread i keep this in the freezer so that it will last longer and i just toast it as i need it and then i spread it with a nice thick layer of peanut butter because peanut butter just makes the world a much better place and i like the kind of peanut butter that is just roasted peanuts and sea salt because it really brings out the flavor and then i top this with some mixed fruit jam that i get from thrive market i like that it's naturally sweetened and then this is all that's left of an apple that i was snacking on while i was finishing my coffee and making my breakfast and so I put that on the plate as well and then after this I realized I was still hungry and also again peanut butter makes the world a better place so I had a second piece that was just peanut butter and it was so good
So something I read on Emily Schumann's blog was really helpful for me because of the way that she said it. So she said that one of the best things that you can do for yourself when you're working from home is to make sure that you change your clothes every day. But the key is, is that you don't necessarily have to change into a full outfit and do full hair and makeup, you can just change out of the sweats you slept in into a fresh pair of sweats and like wash your face, brush your teeth, brush your hair, you know, put deodorant on, all of those things that just make you feel a little bit fresher and more able to think clearly and take on the day. I loved that she said it that way because I feel like there's a lot of pressure right now for everyone, myself included, to be really productive and organized and to be really positive as well. And that can be really hard right now when you don't really know when the, your regular routine is going to go back to normal and that uncertainty can be very heavy you know and that can make it really difficult to be productive and I've been putting a lot of pressure on myself to maintain my same routine and to keep operating and working at the same pace that I always do and when I'm not able to do that I've been really hard on myself and I know you guys can relate because all my friends and family were all talking about this topic and I think there's kind of two different mentalities there's the mentality that you're just going to be in your pjs all day and you know watch tiktok and watch movies all day and and just wait it out and I think that the days like that are fun and I definitely have days like that I want you guys to know that I think those days are important and cozy and fun you know but I can't sustain being in my pajamas all day long because eventually after a couple of days I just don't feel like myself I feel more tired I feel kind of disheveled and it makes it really difficult for me to think clearly and that makes it harder for me to do my work and then I feel like things are piling up and it's it gets really stressful so it's not fun after a certain point or the other side of that, it's just being really hard on yourself and being really rigid, maybe even too rigid. But earlier I talked about wanting to treat myself the way that I would treat a small child. And one thing that I really enjoyed about being a kid was that there was a bit of structure and routine and consistency. And that gave me a feeling of safety because I kind of knew what to expect. And I do think that maintaining some kind of routine and structure during this time is having the same effect on me because it feels like at least some things are the same and that is really comforting to me but that's just me it might be different for you guys but I also have to know when to bend a little bit and when to go slower or when to ramp it up because I think that discipline can be important and I think it's important to be productive but I also think <sighs> knowing when to chill is also really important and it's a fine line and that's never the answer that we want to hear we always want to have you know a, f a direct path to the sweet spot and we just want to know how to get there as quickly as possible and the idea that it's going to change every day is unsettling you know and it's harder that way but it's the truth and i feel like more people need to be talking about it that way the sun is going behind a cloud sorry if it just got dark anyway i'm gonna go make lunch i have some meal prepped stuff that i'm gonna show you how i made because it's really good and especially now when i'm really hungry just being able to like go in and grab it such a lifesaver so i'm gonna go ahead and make some lunch and i'll show you how i do it I found that I'm usually in more of a snacky mood these days, so lunch was more of a snack plate than a proper meal, I guess, but it was really good. I just went ahead and I had some of this leftover chickpea salad. This is a great item for you guys to make because basically you just take some canned chickpeas and whatever veggies you have on hand, so like carrots are really good in this, some celery, I had radishes and red onion, I put pickles in there, and I mix it all together with a creamy tahini dressing, but you could mix it with hummus, you could mix it with vegan mayo, you could even do a yogurt and herb sauce like with dill and some lemon and black pepper, that would be really good. I will put the directions of how I made this in the description box below, but I recommend whenever you are cooking, especially right now, just go ahead and make more than you need for one meal. So if you're making yourself lunch, make enough for a few days because that way you can have a really simple day like I had today where you just kind of throw everything on a plate and you don't have to 
cook every single meal from scratch. So I made a little snack plate with some cut up veggies, also some uh, crackers. But some days I put this chickpea salad on top of a bed of mixed greens with avocado and like my tahini dressing that I make with the mustard and the maple syrup. I love that one as well. So you can definitely turn it into a salad if you want. You can stuff this inside of a baked sweet potato. You can have it with rice or quinoa. It's really versatile and like I said, you can kind of mix and match the sauces and the veggies, but make up a big portion of it so that you have easy meals throughout the week. I cannot recommend that enough. And this was great because it was filling and hearty. It was a great way to sneak in veggies, but I just felt like I was snacking, which is exactly the vibe I wanted for lunch. So I just enjoyed my lunch while watching some YouTube videos and I kept snacking on it while I finished my work for the day. It was a really nice sunny day. So I sat in the kitchen next to the window and I had my food and I had a LaCroix and it was, it was perfect. So for snack time, I wanted something sweet. So I had some oranges, some tea, and also some dark chocolate. I'd been scrolling through Instagram and I keep seeing so many amazing looking desserts. And some days I do go ahead and I bake something from scratch. Like I've been making a lot of my Earl Grey tea cake recently. I've been experimenting with a brownie recipe because I do think that there's something really cozy about baking, especially in the afternoon for some reason. It makes the whole kitchen smell really nice. It's a nice activity that's really soothing and it kind Kind of makes me feel present in the moment but it's also not practical to be baking every single day but i wanted something sweet just like easier so i satisfied my sweet tooth with a fresh orange that was so good really really juicy and some of this dark chocolate that has the same texture and consistency of a crunch bar but it's like a more sophisticated adult crunch bar it's so good and i had a couple squares of that with some tea and it was perfect I read this article in the New York Times about the right way to try dark chocolate. Obviously, if you're just eating chocolate, you just eat chocolate and live your life and be happy. But if you're trying to kind of taste all of the different flavors and the nuances in specialty kind of craft chocolates like this, there is a right way to do it. So you take a square of chocolate and you put it in your mouth, but you don't chew it right away. You're supposed to let the warmth from your mouth kind of melt the chocolate. And that way you can really taste all of the flavors and all of the different notes. And then you chew it. And then apparently, according to this article, you let it melt again and then you swallow it. And that's how you really get the full experience and you can taste all of the different flavors. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm a sommelier. I'm a certified level one sommelier. So when we were doing our classes for the test we would taste different wines side by side and especially white and rosés when they're really really cold you can't taste all of the, the nuance in each wine so we would have to let it come to temperature a little bit so that you'd be able to really get the full expression of the wine and so I guess the same is true with chocolate so I really liked reading that I'll pop it in the description box below I've been really enjoying um, reading articles that are not always news related and that one was really cool. I also recently organized my cupboard so it feels, I mean this might not look organized to you but I know where everything is and I love it. I'll, I'll show you. Dinner was the first like proper meal that I cooked for myself on this day and it was so good. I had half of a large head of cauliflower that I wanted to use up and so I figured I would make my cauliflower alfredo, my fettuccine alfredo and I'm going to show you how I did it because it's really really easy and you don't have to soak any nuts. It's actually nut free and it's surprisingly like creamy and delicious even though there's absolutely no dairy there's not even vegan cheese in it but it turns out really great so all you have to do is just go ahead and chop up the cauliflower and let that steam if you don't have cauliflower fresh you can use frozen if you like that would work really well in another pot, I just brought some water to a boil for the pasta to cook in and I added two big pinches of salt, which is gonna help to flavor the pasta itself before we even add the sauce. I added some rigatoni. I'm obsessed with rigatoni right now because it just holds on to sauce so well, not only because of its shape, but also because it has ridges on the outside, which really helps creamy sauces like this Alfredo cling to each and every noodle and it's just so good. 
Next, I went ahead and I sauteed some greens to stir through the spinach, and instead of using regular olive oil, I used a little bit of the olive oil that the sun-dried tomatoes are packed in because it has a lot of flavor and no, no sense in wasting that. So I sauteed some chard and I recommend if you guys are grocery shopping to go ahead and look for greens that are really robust and hearty like chard and kale. Get other vegetables like cabbages and carrots and potatoes. Those are going to last so much longer than you know leafy greens and spinach. So I just go ahead and I remove the stem and I saute that in the sun-dried tomato oil with some salt and pepper. I had some mushrooms left over from the day before as well, so I would just use those as the main vegetables for the pasta. To make the sauce, I'm gonna go ahead and add about a quarter of a cup of hemp seeds to a blender along with some salt, garlic powder, and onion powder. So this is a very pantry friendly sauce because first of all, you don't have to have nuts on hand. If you don't have them, you don't have to have remembered to soak them. You can just use some hemp seeds and they blend really, really nice and creamy. And then you're just gonna use some regular kitchen spices like garlic powder, salt, and pepper. If you don't have garlic powder and you like the flavor of garlic, you can add one to two cloves of fresh garlic it's going to be a stronger more pronounced garlic flavor then i add the steamed cauliflower along with some soy milk and then this is very important for the sauce you want to reserve some of the cooking liquid that the pasta cooks in and add that to the blender as well and then just go ahead and blend it until it's nice and smooth and creamy I added the creamy sauce and then I added in the sauteed greens, the leftover mushrooms, and some sun-dried tomatoes that I chopped up. You can really add any kind of veggies you like, including frozen spinach, you could do broccoli, peas would be really, really good, really any vegetable you like, or heck, no vegetables because the sauce is made out of a vegetable. Then to make this really bright and so delicious, I added some fresh lemon juice and lemon zest and lots of black pepper. Now lemon zest is such a game changer in recipes, you guys. If you're not used to adding citrus zest to your food, I highly recommend it because not only is it pretty and it kind of just makes everything feel really fancy, but it's also just so flavorful. It's like a concentrated version of the citrus flavor itself and it's so good. I took some pictures because I thought it was pretty, but let's be honest, when it came to dinner time, I just transferred it all to a big bowl because I just like eating food out of bowls better, especially pasta. And I added a little bit more lemon juice on top and this was such a cozy, delicious and healthy meal. That pasta was so good. So I really hope you guys try it. It's a pantry and freezer recipe like that's all you need is some pantry items and some frozen items i used fresh items because that's what i had on hand but you can really use what you have on hand and it is so good and what i really like about it is that it's that kind of great mix between a decadent creamy indulgent pasta that feels like a treat but it's wholesome and nourishing at the same time because it's made with really good ingredients and it's easy so it really ticks all the boxes of exactly what i need right now Today in general was a pretty good day for me food wise and productivity wise. I feel like I was kind of in that sweet spot that I like to be where I'm able to kind of take care of myself and also treat myself and I was gentle and I think that's because I started the day with the intention of trying to be compassionate towards myself and not every day looks like this this happened to be a good day but there have been days that have been really hard and I think that's really normal so if you're watching this video and you've had a really hard day please know that that's normal and that everybody goes through that including myself it has been an emotional roller coaster recently and however you're handling it is okay and you don't have to be perfect you don't have to get it right every day i certainly don't at all and i just really want to promote that message that it's okay to to struggle it does feel good when i'm able to to kind of hit that middle ground but it it's not always the case and if you're if you're not there today it is okay it is so okay so i hope this video reminds you of that i hope this video also gave you some good meal ideas because i know that right now a lot of us are not going to the grocery stores and you should not be going out unless you absolutely have to please stay home as much as possible 
but I, these recipes like the peanut butter and jelly I had was frozen bread and peanut butter and jelly from the cupboard and apples are another fruit that lasts a really long time bananas citrus fruits pears and apples those are really good because they last a long time my battery died anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed i make a lot of what i eat in a day videos and easy recipes like this so if you like that kind of thing hit subscribe and i will see you guys in a video very soon be healthy be safe be gentle with yourself Eat something good. Be happy. Bye.